Hi, Stephen Kirsten, Consolidated Employers Organization down in Cape Town. In approximately a month ago, we started on a series of videos on organizational rights, where we've discussed numerous topics on the issue, issues and subjects within organizational rights disputes. Today, we'll be concluding the series of videos, and I thought we'd take the opportunity to deal with some of the questions that we've received. Uh, there's certain points that our viewers are uncertain of, and I thought that we would take the most popular questions and deal with those. So, the first question that we've been asked is dealing with the information supplied by the union. The question was that the union has failed to supply me with any proof that the workers have joined up with the union. Should I nevertheless grant the organizational right? Uh, in our video, I would have explained to you that the union needs to provide you with a certificate of registration in addition to a letter uh, explaining and setting out which rights it seeks to acquire. And finally, that the union must supply you with the signed debit order forms. If you do not have the debit order forms, the stop order forms, which are signed by the employees, you do not have to have a meeting with the union. They have to supply you with that information. It is a prerequisite in our law. Right. The second question that we've received regarding organizational rights is the question on sufficient representation. A number of companies have gotten in touch with us and said to us, we were told that 30% is a number and that is the number that we should consider as being sufficient representation and allowing the union uh, organizational rights. It was approximately 20 years ago in a case that was Sheraton Textiles where the CCMA set down a number as a guideline of 30%. Over the last 20 years, that has been accepted as the norm. And if a union was 28% representativity within the workplace, they were generally not granted organizational rights. That position has changed. The question of 30% and whether that is a sufficient number does not exist anymore. All right, and the third question that we've been asked is about the rights to bargain. Um, some people have asked me that we've granted organizational rights to the union and now the union is saying that we need to bargain with them in terms of salaries, wages and other matters of mutual interest. So the question really is, does the entitlement to organizational rights permit the union to bargain and is the company compelled to bargain matters of mutual interest with the union? Uh, the answer to that question simply is no, it does not. Um, an organizational right has nothing to do with rights to bargain. In fact, you will not find any law that compels a company to bargain matters of mutual interest with a union. Those are completely separate. It is considered a normal practice, though, that should the union represent more than 50% of the employees in the workplace, that a recognition agreement will be concluded which will include bargaining rights. In addition to this, it can be a bit more complex in that a majority union can also conclude a collective agreement with the company in the, in the form of either a closed shop agreement or an agency shop agreement. In order to get more details on those specific collective agreements, you're welcome to contact our offices and we will give you more information in that regard. But the granting of organizational rights does not uh, entitle the union to any rights regarding bargaining and no one can compel the company to bargain um, with the union. And then the final question that we've received uh, regarding organizational rights deals with the issue of the removal of rights. So uh, you sign a agreement with the union agreement whereby you set a threshold of 25% for example regarding substantive organizational rights and then the union falls below that number. The question that is asked is can I unilaterally remove those rights from the union? Can I take them away because they are no longer compliant or is there a process that needs to be followed? And the answer to that question is that there is a process that does need to be followed. You cannot unilaterally remove the rights. It is quite all right and in order to set a threshold agreement in your collective agreement, your recognition agreement. 
Should the union fall below that threshold, you can send a, a letter to the union advising them that they are not compliant and they do not have sufficient members and that they need to remedy the situation. The union has 30 days to remedy the situation. Should they not get their threshold number above the required amount, you can then as a company refer a matter to the CCMA, a dispute whereby it will be considered whether those rights will be removed from the union. So that deals with the four questions that we've been receiving most often and we hope that today's video will provide clarity on those issues which are often problematic in the field of organizational rights. We hope that you found this series on organizational rights informative and that you've learned something from it. If you still have questions, feel free to contact our officers and we will assist where we can. We hope you've enjoyed it. Remember please to like or share this video down below. Cheers for now.